Hello, Conquerors. Welcome back to another Conquer Business Spotlight. I'm Seneca Williams, also known as Ask Coach Sen, and I'm the founder of the Conquer Network. What is the Conquer Network? We support women entrepreneurs in building mental wealth for business growth and development. It all starts in the mind. And all of the guests that I've had so far for the Conquer Business Spotlights are women entrepreneurs. Some of them are therapists. Some of them are just people out there empowering other women to live their best lives. And they are telling us about not only their business, but part of their journey, their conquer stories. So we have another great one tonight. I am super excited to have this one because I met her a couple of years ago. She is an author. She's also a therapist and a, fi a facilitator of some awesome sister circles, as well as a performer. She's just so many things. So let me go ahead and tell you guys how this works. We like participation. If you're an entrepreneur and you're new here, this is your first Conquer Business Spotlight, we want to know about you and your business. So shout out your business in the comments. If you're an entrepreneur, where you're located, you never know, you might link with someone, get some business in this. Also, when our speakers come on, we like to support them. We like to know what you're getting from the Conquer Business Spotlights. So if they say something and you really like it and you're like, wow, they are dropping gems, go ahead and drop some gems in the comments. If they're saying something and you're like, I need to know this, taking notes, drop that in the comments too, taking notes, right? And if you just wanna support this queen, you love what they're talking about, you just wanna shout them out and celebrate them, drop those crowns in the comments as well. So today we have Miss Ebony Kennedy, and let me go ahead and just tell you a little bit about her. She is phenomenal. When she gets here, you're just going to see why I said that. Welcome, welcome. I see that she's already on here. And then also we have My Cruising Fam. Welcome as well. So Ebony Ke Kennedy, I'm just reading her bio from her book titled The Book That Told On Me. And on her bio, she says she's a woman who believes in the power of words. Words are phenomenal and they are very important. She began her literary journey at the age of 10 years old. She competed in the local Theodore Gibson oratory competition in the fifth grade, and she won first place the preceding three years after. So she's been doing this for a long time. Her love for words and people continued to grow over the years, which led her to pursue a master's in psychology. So you guys, not only is she an author and she is writing and helping people with trauma that way through her book, the book that told on me, she's also a therapist as well. So she's here. Let me pull her in. On in. So again, you guys, if you are hearing something that you like, go ahead and support her. Drop those gems, drop those notepads, and go ahead and drop the crowns. Welcome, Ebony. Hey. Hello. Can you guys see me? Hold on. I okay. see you, but it looks, hey. okay, now, now I see you. Okay. <laughs> it looks like a painting, actually, when oh, it first yeah? came up. Yeah. It was like, it was like oh, a yeah. still portrait. Check me out. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, so um, it's been way too long. Way too long. That's what I was saying. I was like, this is how we got to catch up, I guess, girl. We're catching up in front of you guys. Yes, yes. <laughs> but okay, what you're doing so is awesome, Seneca. I love this. I love it. Thank you. Well, everything that I, I've said already that you do is awesome. I'm just trying to do my part in the world. I hate, I hate. So what we all are trying to do, right? We should be trying to do at least. So yes. Do our little part, right? Yes. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> that's how we're here. We're here like to talk about the real stuff. And that's why I invited you and I wanted to spotlight what you're doing because you're doing so much and I probably don't even know all of what you're doing. So I'm going to, you know, I introduced you, I read your bio, but I'm going to let you go ahead and tell people a little bit about you. Okay. All right. Hi guys. Um, so as she has introduced me, my name is Ebony Kennedy, um, AKA true justice. That's my spoken word poetry name. 
Um, so as by trade, I'm a therapist, but also I facilitate something called Healing Circles, which I'm um, Seneca um, has been a part of before. And um, basically, it's my thought process through my own healing journey. You know, as women, not just as women, but as people, we go through so much in our lives that we are not healed from. And that's OK, because we're constantly healing, but we got to start somewhere. And I know for me um, and my own healing process, it took me to understand my pain to turn that pain to power. But in order for in order for me to do that, I had to process in a lot of things that a lot of traumas that happened in my childhood um, in my life to access that power. So my I feel like I know that my a part of my purpose is to reach out to women, men and anybody else who's willing to listen <laughs> to and learn also how to. Um, what it looks like to properly um, heal. I mean, we're always healing, but how to access that pain and turn that pain into power. So that is my mission. That is the point of my book. Um, and also, since I'm a spoken word, you know, poet, um, I do, when I express myself, it's more than likely poetically, because I think poetically, so that's just the way it comes out. But the whole book is about um, just accessing that power that's on the inside of all of us. You know what I'm saying? But first, we got to get that pain out the way so we can go ahead and get to that power so that's what i'm doing so awesome yeah. you know i i'm just remembering as you're talking about the sister circle that i attended that you facilitated you guys probably have been to sister circles but it was not like this one first of all ebony sets the mood like it's a whole mood <laughs> Hey, you gotta get the like vibe you right. Think you know? You're away somewhere on a retreat. That's what it felt like. She can transform the space where you feel like you are at a retreat. And not only does she set that that space where you feel like um you're a retreat, it almost felt like um you were enclosed in a safe space right. where you can say anything. And then she also was doing her spoken word poetry. So now everyone's open. <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah. Yes. So I love that you are taking therapy and, and mental health and showing that we can do this in so many ways. Yes. Yes, definitely. And I think that a lot of times, um, even when I started out in the field, I noticed that the traditional just sitting across from somebody and letting them talk about, it doesn't always work. You know, for some people it works, right? Other people, it doesn't, you have to get creative and use creative things. So since poetry is my thing, listen, you, I'm going to create a space where you feel comfortable because I'm exposed myself first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to let you know that it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And especially Sister Circle was so dear to me. It's so dear to me still um because in a lot of friendships you're not even free to share you know our mess ups or where we hurt or because sometimes people can be so judgmental you know so that we don't have that free space just to to and really that's a part of healing you know what i'm saying uh, being allowed to verbalize this happened to me or i've done this you know and i don't even know why i've done this you know and and have that space where you can share that with other women who support you and encourage you instead of talk about you you know so that was really, really why I, I love to do that. And even in the midst of your storm, there is still peace. So that's what mm -hmm. I try to create in that moment, you know, so for everybody who attends. Yes, yes. So for today, you know, it's Women's History Month. And as a therapist, I primarily support entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. And you would be so surprised how past traumas, mm -hmm. things that people hold on to come up in their business, mm -hmm. stops them from showing up, stops them from selling, stops them from charging their work, stops them from doing whatever it is that they need to do to show their worth, to show up fully mm -hmm. in their business, to communicate the way that they need to communicate or set boundaries. You'll be so surprised that that would happen. So I want us to talk a little bit about how can we use the power mm -hmm. of healing journeys, poetry, kind of different ways, even sister circles, to help us as women entrepreneurs. What are your thoughts on how could we can use all these different things to help us as women entrepreneurs? Um, definitely, if you haven't been to therapy, I'm going to say definitely try it. <laughs> That's one. Um, you know, 
So, um, cause it's good, you know, and if you find somebody that's boring, keep searching. If somebody else does not trust me, you know what I'm saying? So, um, starts there and it just starts with you knowing that you are worthy, but it's the difference between the idea that you're worthy and believing that you are worthy. And in order for you to access that worthiness, sometimes it's pain that's preventing us from, from accessing that, that true worthiness is on, on the inside. So if I have a business and I don't feel worthy, I'm not going to charge people for my, for, for my services. I'm going to undercharge people for my services. I'm not going to step out because I feel like I'm not capable. You know what I'm saying? So I agree 100% syndicate stops you from, again, accessing that power. But in order to access the power, you have to say, what is in my way? And face that very thing that's in your way and face it head on confrontation in order to get peace you got to go to war you know so you got to face whatever it is i don't care whose voice it is that's in your head if it's your mama voice that told you that's too hard for you you got to get up outside of that you know what i'm saying or if it's your dad's voice that told you you ain't gonna never be nothing you got to learn how to get up out of that you know so face and confront the very thing that made you feel that you are not worthy of those things and i tell you this because this is my testimony you know i had to also learn i was the same way girl when i first started with everything i was like free free <laughs> you know what I'm saying? right i just want to love the world which is okay right because i still have that i still have that passion but i have to understand that what i do is 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 it's it's still how i how i gotta survive right so and I'm still worthy of what I asked for. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is you have to accept that worthiness, but find out what's standing in your way first. And you can do that through, I don't care if it's through poetry, where you start getting out the things that hurt you. Just start writing out. Start writing a poem if you do like poetry. Start writing out and say, I want to think about the things that are stopping me. And trust me, you get that paper and that pen, girl, it's going to flow out of you. You know, so go ahead and just start doing that to really get they going. And once you know it, knowing it's half the battle, it's true when they say that. You know, I heard the saying, but it's true. Once you know what no, it is, then you know, true. yes. Then you know, if you know the demon, then you know how to fight that demon. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, but you got to identify what is it? Where does this come from? And know that it doesn't belong to you. So, yes, definitely. It's interesting that you said that, you know, just uh, for myself being transparent, my father was in my head for pretty much much of my career journey and my entrepreneurial journey. And like you said, knowing is half the battle. I had to be like, wait a minute, is this an internal thing? Like, is it my own voice that's telling me this or is it an external voice? And I found that I was making decisions off of the fear of what people will not approve. Yep. And that was knowing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's great to know because I love how people are like, well, I know what's wrong with me. I have imposter syndrome. Okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> now you know that. <laughs> yes. yes. Like, now what? What are you going to do? <laughs> right. Right. You right. know, you but now what are you going to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> And, and and that's the thing. And the thing is that we really have to confront those real things. It's just like, all right, if you go to the doctor and you get symptoms, uh, you're having symptoms and they give you a medication that just covers the symptoms, right? It doesn't address the root of the problem. The issue is going to come back up. It's the same thing about healing. And that's why I encourage so many women, listen, that Band-Aid, at some point it's going to be ripped off, baby. Like you got to heal it at the, the, the root. And once you heal it at the root, then you can be prosperous. Then you can step into that prosperity that was made for you. You know, but we got to learn how to do that. And speaking from experience, I ain't saying nothing I ain't been through. So, yeah, yeah, it's real. And, and thank you for sharing that, Seneca, because, you know, and for me, it was kind of like my mom's voice. Like, that's too hard. You know what I'm saying? Why would you want to do that? That's so hard. You know, and for a long time, I used to say to myself, I, I don't know how. And, I, and, and then all I was doing was victimizing myself and saying, well, I don't. I, there's no way I can do this. You know what I'm saying? Our feeling helplessness, and that's not that's not true. You can do whatever you set your mind to. I don't care if you don't know how, you can learn to know how. You know, but you got to just get fight that thing that's in front of you, and then, full, hey, that's it. Access that power. That's been a theme. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about what you don't know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yes. Yes. That, like, of course, nobody knows how to do anything no. until they know how to do it, right? Until they know First how to do it, yes. Yeah. Find out how to do this, right? That's the first step. How do I do this? <laughs> yes. And it was just like when I started, let me say, when I, I just uh, started my LLC here um, in Louisiana. <laughs> so I said, guess who's going to figure it out? I'm going to figure it out. 
So, and that's again, but when you're always fighting that, that sits you, that tells you that you can do this, you can do this and know that no matter what, get that voice out your head, you can do it. You know, you're capable, you're, you're, this is what you're supposed to do. So you're going to do it. So, yeah. So, and I just. So, yeah. So I uh, love it. I love it. I hope that you will uh, come and we will pay you because we know your <laughs> worth. But I hope that you will come and do um, a sister circle for us. I know that you are doing this virtually now, right? The sister circles. It's breaking up a little. I'm not sure if I'm breaking up. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good. You guys that are listening, can you see and hear both of us? Let us know what's going on. I see hearts, but I'm not sure okay. if I'm frozen or broken up or if you are. Okay. Do I sound clear right okay. now? Yeah, now you're okay. clear. You're good. Okay. okay. So the last thing I started hearing you saying is you are doing virtual sister circles. Yes, I am doing okay. virtual sister circles. I've also started uh, the literacy programs. I'm starting that to work with at-risk teens. And it's a literary literary program that through the use of spoken word poetry um, to give the kids something like a coping skill. You know, poetry helped me throughout my childhood, so I want to give that back. So I, um, I have developed a curriculum for schools um, and through the use of basically integrating my therapy with my, my poetry skills and putting that together and giving it to the world. So, yes. So. Oh, wow. You are a whole movement. Uh, thank you. <laughs> girl, we are moving because you're doing it, girl. <laughs> I am. I'm trying. No, I'm not trying. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. That's all we can do. Sometimes things, you know, happen and come up and, um, you know, 2020 was really challenging for many people. And that's why also I wanted to do these business spotlights because, you know, even though we haven't spoken or I think we haven't seen each other in years because I know I didn't see you in 2020. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so now yeah. 2021, I know stuff is happening and going on for all of us, myself included. Yeah. But I wanted to show that, you know, we are thriving through this. Mm -hmm. We can still show up in the best way that we can, mm -hmm. um, even if it's just a little bit. Yes. I had to actually talk myself through that, you know, because I got sick last year and I was like, well, I can't wait to fully be better. I'm going to do what I can do and show up the way that I can show up. Mm -hmm. So I, I am, I'm doing what I can to my little part in the world. And, you know, you were in Florida now, where are you located? So now I'm in Louisiana at the moment. Yes. I've been flying back and forth because I, I actually did a, a, a poem at a sexual abuse um, retreat. So I've, I've been flying back and forth, but I'm located now in Louisiana, which was a big change for me, but my grandfather died of COVID, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it just made me like want to be more around my family. And I was the only one in Miami. So mm -hmm. yes, so here I am. Well, like yeah. I said, we've been going through a lot and I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank so you. many people have been going through it and we're trying our best to thrive. But people okay. are thriving. And I think it's important for those who are in that setting of, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it to see these and know that, okay, people are thriving through the challenges. Uh, they're conquering their fears. They're conquering their, their limiting beliefs and whatever is going on in the setbacks to do what they can. So we have some more people that are tuning in. Um, for those of you who do not know, uh, Ebony is an author. She is a spoken word poet. She's a facilitator of Sister Circles. She has now just recently started a youth mission. Um, yeah. And she's a therapist. Did I even say that yet? <laughs> she's a therapist. And you know what's important about that is I hear women saying, well, what? I got to do one thing. Like they get stuck. And I'm not saying do all the things at once, because I know you at started with one thing and you built yes. on it. Right? Yes. Can you speak to that for that person who's like, I have all of these ideas and they're not executing nothing? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, I speak from experience because it took me, I, I was that, 
I was that person, right? Until I start realizing that I was worthy of all of it. So the thing is, yes, yeah, so you have all these ideas. What I have, I have a journal where I write every one of them down, right? And the thing is, I do multitask and work on that several different times. You know, I may work on this one today and I may work on this one tomorrow and I set goals for myself. So don't overwhelm yourself and I think the more you learn that you're standing in your purpose and whatever you are meant to do, how many ever projects that is, right? Because it's great to have more than one thing. You can do it, right? So I say, I'm, I'm not a person that's going to tell you, oh, well, just focus on one thing. Because what I've learned is, it's crazy because sometimes maybe I, I'm, I haven't done a sister circle lately, but then bam, I get a call. Somebody say, hey, can you do a poem for me somewhere? Sure, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And you just go with it. So do what you can. And, and, and other than that, don't beat yourself up, right? I have days where I'm like, I ain't do nothing today. This is so not productive, right? <laughs> and, but then I learned that we got to rest too, right? Because we do, I do a whole lot. And when I'm tired, I say, okay, I've learned how to time out. And it has nothing to do with, with that I'm not a good entrepreneur just because I timed out that one day. You can time out, right? Because you got a lot going on. But then when it's go time, it's go time. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? So, but you got to just set yourself up, but write everything you want to do, right? And even in doing that, don't let no outside influence tell you that it's too hard or too big, right? Because your purpose is way bigger. So that's another thing. Don't, don't let nobody stop your shine or say that you can't do that. You can't do all those things. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And you will, you know, so I've learned that I still have other projects. I still need to pick up too, you know, so, but just get out and do it. That's the biggest thing I can say because a lot of times we don't do it because we're afraid that, oh, it's not going to pop or this is not going to work or, man, don't listen to that. That's, 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 not, that's not you. That's not the real you on the inside. You know, so that's what I say. You and I could talk probably for a very, very long time, but <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to do that here tonight because I'm like, yes. oh, yeah, I got this thought and this idea and we can talk about that and we can talk about this. But we're spotlighting you, and I want um, those who are on here to know where they can get your book. Okay. So my um, book is on Amazon. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So my book is on Amazon, uh, the book that told on me. So like I said earlier, it's a poetry book that talks about when you don't address childhood trauma, what that looks like. So go ahead, check that out if you like poetry, and you know, if you want to help it on your healing journey, go ahead. So yeah. Awesome. And if they want to connect with you, where can they find you to connect with you? So you can find me at True Justice One Two Three right here on your local Instagram. <laughs> so if you need to reach out for me for bookings or anything else, you can go ahead and reach me there. Absolutely. And you're doing bookings virtually as well? Yes. Awesome. Because I know someone is going to check out your page and be like, oh, man, she's in this state, and she's not available. I want to feel that amazing sister circle too. Yeah. She's doing them virtually, you guys. And I'm looking forward to being a part of one or organizing one. Anyone that's on here tonight or that watches this on the replay, would you like for Ebony to do a sister circle for the Conquer Network? Will you come to it? And if you are also watching this on the replay or live, let us know if you'd like for her to also do some spoken word or a book reading. Yes. That would be awesome as well. I think that a lot of things that you said, especially I hope when people watch this back and, you know, watch these again, because sometimes you miss things when people are talking, but I think they're going to hear some things that you said, which is, you know, you can do more than one thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people get caught up with is I don't know how to do all these things. You can do all these things. You just got to plan it out, yes, it write is. down your goals. Yep. And something else that you said is deal with the past trauma and then turn that pain into power. Yes. You're not going to therapy. You're not talking to her to just stay in the pain. You're talking to her to use that pain for power. Yes. I, I even for myself said that this is going to be my fuel. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's <laughs> right, girl. It is. And, and, and it is. And the thing is, because as we know it, at least we only got one life to live. You know, so if, if God forbid you die tomorrow, you want to know that you walked in your full purpose. That's why you're here. You know, so we got to do it. That's what we've been called to do. And you doing it, girl. So. <laughs> 
You know, I just got like uh, goosebumps when you said that. If we die tomorrow, at least you will know that you walked in your full purpose. You were doing the things instead of just holding it in your head. You were actually yes. doing that. Yes. Amen to that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can die happy like that. That, that that's what yes. that's, that's my thing. I can die happy like I did everything that I was supposed to do. Hey God, <laughs> you know? I, did. I did what you told me to do. God, I did. I Where did my that. wings at, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> can I get some Gucci ones? Matter of fact, no. <laughs> You know what? Somebody's watching this right now. Like, are you really talking about dying? Like, you're talking like this. You're on another level. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what life is, though, to do everything that's inside of you and leave here empty. Yes. I actually wrote a poem like that. I know I'm not a poet oh. like you. I won't claim to be. But I did write something like that when Chadwick Boseman passed away. Oh. And I was thinking about all these young people that passed away, like um, Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, all these young people. And I was like, you know, they left the world on empty. Yes. They gave yes. everything. Yes. Even though they, they weren't 80 years old or 90 years old, they gave everything, everything. and they left empty. They just, did you see the last movie with Chadwick? Yes, yes. And see, what I didn't know is he had cancer and he was visiting kids who had cancer and like and and that's what there you go. That's that's the way to go out. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? That's if I'm gonna go out, go. that's the way to go out. Yes. So that's that's it for me. Yes, yes. I love this. This was awesome. No, you know, I'm so glad we, listen guys, we're catching up on IG <laughs> live. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Somebody said, save this live, please. Yes, we're going to save it. It's going to be saved in the IG TV section of the Conquer Network. So you'll be able to go back and catch it from the beginning and watch it over and over, share it with your friends. Somebody needs to hear this word because they're sitting there with all their stuff inside of them and not putting it out into the world. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they're definitely, and don't let with nobody else. I don't care if you get two likes every week. Don't care. It does not matter because your purpose is not attached to likes. So remember that. I don't care if nobody buy your product for a whole month, right? Your product is not attached to your purpose. So all it takes, your life can change in one day, in one blink of eye. All you got to do is walk out on it. Walk out on that purpose, no matter what. So keep that in mind. I love it. That's like, oh my God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> no, because people get, you know, attached to, well, I, you know, I put out yeah. this and nobody didn't like it. Or I put out this and nobody didn't buy it. Maybe you just around the wrong crowd and it takes one day for the one right person to see it and the right person to buy it. So like, don't care. It's not about social. Please don't get up in the hype of likes and, and all this stuff. You like you. Okay, your purpose you know, likes you. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Your purpose likes you. That's enough. Your purpose likes you. I like that. All right, let's coin that. Ebony said your purpose likes you. Don't yeah. get caught up in the likes. Your purpose likes you. I yeah. love it. So, you know, someone said, thank you, you ladies rock. Thank you for uh, tuning in. That was, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all of you who tuned in and I appreciate you, Ebony. I know, I know like what it's like taking your time out when you have a busy schedule. I was like, I hope she can do this. And I was like, okay, let's check in. You still going to do it? You still come? <laughs> girl, always for you, girl. I ain't never too busy. <laughs> so, I'm with you. Somebody got a good word tonight. I know that they did. And I know somebody that's watching this replay is going to get a good word out of this. I know I did. I got goosebumps. And I'm like, yes, I got to keep walking in my purpose. My purpose likes me. Yes. It doesn't matter how many people are, are buying or tuned in or liking or anything like that. So you guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great weekend and have a successful 2021. Peace yes. and blessings. Peace.